there's just, they're always a step ahead. So um, no, I'm I'm not surprised. I think there's a real real love of this kind of content. Um, and like I said, a smart audience. Really smart audience. Like reality TV can get a really bad rap. You know what I mean? But the people who sit down and watch these shows aren't just interested always in what's happening directly on the screen. And that's why I think the reality community online is as big and deep as it is. And yeah, they dive deep. So I don't think, especially after the first one, and knowing as many big reality TV fans as we do, um, who have worked with us on this project and other ones, I don't think it's surprising anymore, but it is really interesting to watch how they watch the documentary. Because again, they're not just interested in the reality TV of it. They're interested in every single piece of it. And I think our hope was to make a documentary where if you've been following this from day one and you know all the ins and outs of Real Housewives, you take something new away or find interesting perspective. But also if you're coming to this fresh and you don't know, you know, the story of Tom, you know, that there, there's something for you, too. And it's still accessible to someone who's sitting with this for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of like, I know Emily D. Baker really well. Like I, I knew a lot of it, but I took like the whole Marco Marco stuff, even though I've read it, I took away, like I learned a lot from that. Like, I don't think I knew the full extent of all of that until I watched this. It yes. seems to be a, a big one. That's a, it's a, it's a big part of the doc that people are super interested in. And I mean, again, from every perspective, because we don't just have Chris and Marco we actually do talk to Erica's team about this specific lawsuit and what they think of it. And I think that is, you know, it's, it's a little extra step further, but again, seeing people, hearing people, the impact of that, I think is huge. Like you said, you, you've read about it. And that interview was incredibly long and very emotional. And there is so much that came out in it. Um, but you only have so much time. What, what, is there something that stands out that, to that point is on the cutting room floor that is just not in this something that was like a hard decision of like right we only have so much time we all have to edit and you know i wish we could have just got this one last thing in there everything I, is precious a lot of things yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of long and hard conversations with the team and polite fights between us uh, and everyone care you know is drawn to different things or there's moments that you like that are funny or um, heartfelt and. Um... Or there's just that moment when you realize like, we can't put everything in. It would be hours and hours and hours of footage. So it they, they, they're they hard conversations. But again, when you work with as good a team as we work with, like you can't have those conversations with just anybody, but we can have them with each other, which is really good. But no, the cut down process is, always the most difficult of every project it's always like what part do you cut now in order to make it a link that a viewer can watch and is interested in watching um it's brutal but the essential stuff is all there it is brutal but the essential stuff is there it's hard to edit stuff out right i mean now granted if you did leave it all and you had like a 10-part series i guarantee you everyone listening to this would watch all 10 parts but we might we did all joke have. about that there's always the joke when's the next part when's the next part so we kind of always like have a joke we know the appetite is there but we also we want to give people stuff now so that they're not you know stuff waiting and waiting and waiting so yeah did you feel you know because you talked we talked a little bit about like that scene like where we open and where erica is meeting the victims and like you know we heard that around the world when it happened and people were like oh my god i can't believe this is happening and i know kimberly archie really well like did you feel like being a part of that, watching it, like, did you feel that was real? You know, like a lot of people at the time said, you know, even in watching this are like, you know, well, there's cameras there. Of course, you're meeting the victims now. And, you know, like, look, sometimes you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Like I said, Erica can do no right with certain people. But like, did you feel the emotion? Did you feel the authenticity in that scene, like from Erica? Different because we also know how it all came about, too. Like, I mean you know, behind the scenes, obviously, that's probably, I would say, and Jake, we can, I think this would be a pretty easy thing to say, but that was probably the biggest role of the dice was knowing, you know, not knowing whether or not Erica would be able to show up for something like that. You know what I mean? And it came together really quickly. Not that I think there hadn't been potentially other tries in the past, but nothing that had ever come close to the possibility of it really ever happening. 
And I think what you see in the film is that even the people who were there were surprised. So, I mean, they were there for an event. Um, and then the cameras show up and you're kind of like, it may or it may not happen. So I think the the kind of surprise that you see a little bit in the room makes it genuine. But I do think that, yeah, there's always the complication and we deal with this because we work in TV. You hope that people will forget the cameras are around. You hope. And I think it's what Kines said earlier. People come to the project with their own, you know, kind of preconceived notions and maybe have a side. I, I think that might color how someone watches, but, um, you know, I think that's up to the viewer, whether how they want to take that meeting. Right. And as producers, it's not really your job to influence it. It's just to, like you said, stay, tr stay close to the truth and present it or, and you yeah. want, I mean, isn't that, don't you feel like it's a job well done when there are so many sides and people can watch a scene and really have differences of opinions? Yes, absolutely. Genuinely. Yes. In, in a lot of the comments I saw online, just quickly, like in this, I didn't really delve into it because I don't really read a lot of the comments either, but a lot of people, the Marco Marco, to me, it stood out of like, people were sympathetic towards Erica from watching this more so. And then I think that is when they're like, yeah, no, just for, I mean, just not even asking you to comment, it's just saying like that, that the Marco Marco scene to me was like people from the comments were like, we were just starting to feel for Eric on this and that and the big dumps. And they're like, yeah, no, this this was what. So, I mean, that's right. That's what you kind of want to do, present all the sides. Yeah, you present all of the sides. And again, people take away, they, they're they going to come in with something and then they're going to walk away with something. Whether that idea changes is really hopefully just based on the people that they're meeting and the stories that they're, they're getting. And like you said, because there are so many different perspectives, there is a part of us that knows that we're doing our job. Um, the Marco Marco thing has been a huge, a huge part of it on this one. And I think in part, it's because they haven't really been out there. They have only spoken to the LA Times and that's it. You know what I mean? So if you want this perspective, if you want to see that part of the story, if you want to hear from Chris himself, I think this is where you have to come to do it. Um, and it is, it is a very powerful back and forth, I think, on both sides of the story. So I think it's one of those places that people are reacting to really well. We're also like, People love Danny Barnes and it's again, a perspective they haven't seen a ton of, which is taking us back all those decades on the accusations against Tom. Um, and I think those are like, you know, seeing that stuff and seeing how it works out. But yeah, the Marco Marco stuff has, has appeared to be, you know, very impactful coming out of this thing, but it's not the only thing, but it is, you know, it, ha it, has, it has garnered a lot of chatter. What was it like, you know, you've heard so much about like Gerardi Keys, like walking the halls, like now we actually see this, you know, we see blood on the walls and we see like, there you are, we see the new owners talking about MTV Cribs as he's taking us on a tour. Like, what was it like to like film inside Gerardi Keys? It's something that we've wanted to, we've been trying to get into the office for years. We tried for the first one and it didn't work out. Um, so for this one, I think it was a big moment for us. It was fascinating. And, you know, you, we've driven by that office many times. We've seen photos from inside. Um, but to go in and see, it really is, as they describe, it's sort of this opulent,